Every time anybody watches me hammer, I always get comments. Why the unnecessary tapping of the anvil? And I don't know why, but this really strikes a nerve with some people. I've had everything from just typical questions to downright hateful responses in regards to why I am desecrating the top of my anvil. And uh, yeah, I don't understand it. Why the hate? Why the negative discord in tapping the top of my anvil? It's not like I'm drilling my hammer into the top of it. I'm not taking a chance of chipping off any sorts of pieces of hardened steel. For me, it's a rhythm thing. So that's what I wanted to talk about today is hammer technique, rhythm, and rotation and or placement of the material. My style is going to be different from your style. My anvil height is going to be different from your anvil height. In fact, I've got two anvils here that are both slightly different heights. And I've got other anvils that are set up differently. And I've got tooling that is set up at different heights. It all works for me. So here's our test piece. I don't have it real hot at the moment. There. As you can see, I would strike three to four times and then rotate the bar stock. This is a piece of square stock and my wrist does not rotate all the way around. So it gives me time in my hammering to rotate the material. This may not work for you. You may just hold the hammer up out of the way. You may just rest the hammer on the face of the anvil. Or, you know, you may stand here and twirl the hammer around. It's hard telling what you do. But for me, this works. Now, of course, if I'm going to draw this material out, I'm going to hit half on, half off. And then here momentarily, I will also discuss my swinging technique. Because since my injury with my elbow and maturing as a blacksmith, there's a lot of mistakes that you make early on in how you approach the anvil and how you swing the hammer. Since that time, I've learned a lot, and I've been able to mitigate the way that I swing the hammer so that I no longer take the chance of injuring myself or wearing out my joints prematurely. So as you might have seen in the previous clip, when I am hammering, I try to keep my elbow in a stationary position. I lift with my arm, elbow, and shoulder consecutively. Everything is in motion together. I'm not extending my elbow. I'm not trying to come out this way and hit. I'm not putting my thumb on the back of the hammer which will cause things such as tennis elbow prematurely. Now, there's carpenters and stuff that hit and swing with just their elbow and their forearm constantly, and they may have a full, lifelong, fruitful career without ever really injuring themselves, other than just minor arthritis. Myself, unfortunately, I wasn't blessed in that department. I have the beginning stages of rheumatoid arthritis. Um, the doctors have done blood work and all sorts of other tests, and they believe that's what it is. I have flare-ups, and uh, you know, it's, it's not anything that's crippling or is going to cause me to quit blacksmithing, but I have had to adapt my personal way of doing things to that. I try not to use too heavy a hammers. I do have some four-pound hammers that I will utilize, but typically out of most of my forgings, I may only use those for 30 minutes or so out of an entire day. Most commonly, I will use a three pound hammer. Now this is one that I've, since becoming a little bit more, more mature as a smith, I've got it dressed the way that I like, I've redone the handle, and this is one of my favorite hammers, hence why it's next to my anvil. And then I will utilize a one pound cross peen hammer or ball peen. These are all my favorite hammers. They are my 
first go-to choice in my line of work, unless I'm doing something that involves a lot of texturing, or it's a specialty hammer, or it's a vertical peen or straight peen hammer, as opposed to a cross peen. And I've explained all those in other videos. Now, as I said, I try to keep everything in unison. Forearm, I think I said arm earlier, but forearm, elbow, shoulder, everything works together. The majority of the movement is coming from my shoulder. Okay. Now, what about rotator cuffs? What about, you know, I get you. There's really no, from a Smith standpoint that's been doing it now for over five years, there's really no right or truly wrong way. It is whatever is comfortable to the user. Now I've branched away in talking here, away from the tapping of the anvil, but really there's nothing much more to say. For me, it's a rhythm thing. It helps me keep time. I don't go to hammering on one side of a piece of material for an extended period, 18, 20 blows as opposed to 10 on the other, and then I have to go back through and try to straighten things out. Me, everything is very methodical, and I like to try to keep things even, so that's just me. I hit five, six, ten times, I tap the anvil, allowing my other hand time to rotate, allowing my eyesight to line up with the material so that my muscles and everything, I strike without smacking the face of the anvil. Everything works for me. Now, is it a waste of time? Is it a waste of energy? Am I potentially damaging the anvil? I've been doing it now for five years and I haven't yet, so it works. Maybe it'll work for you. Okay, so not to point any fingers or single anybody out, maybe they just didn't quite understand my technique and the fact that it works for me. Again, I don't understand why there's so much retort, why there's so much almost hatred in an individual and their hammering style. I've been making YouTube videos now for a few years. Um, I've ran a moderately successful blacksmithing business for five years. And I've been able to avoid significant injury to myself. In fact, when I talk about injuring my elbow, I have a full thickness tear of the extensor, extensor tendon. And uh, they conducted an MRI May of last year. And uh, I had to take some time off hence why the YouTube videos weren't coming through, and it probably needs surgery, but I've been working with it since then, I know my limitations, and I've adapted my hammering style so that I don't injure myself even further. Also, I like to think that during the time that I'm rotating the material and I'm repositioning and or I'm resting the hammer or tapping the top of the anvil, it's kind of like a small break for me. It's not consecutively hitting the material. Now, is it allowing the material to cool? Yes. But, as you've seen earlier, I moved the material on this and it wasn't all that hot. So, it's more or less a matter of preference, you know. I'm fortunate that I've got a Majestic Forge, I've also got a, uh, a Devil's Forge, I've got a Coal Forge, I started with a Coal Forge, a Break Drum Forge. So, I've been well-rounded in understanding what types of material works with certain degrees of heat. Now, when I pulled this out, this was a dull orange, not even quite red yet, and by no means yellow. So, I knew it was going to be hard to move, but it also allowed me to demonstrate my point in hammering. So, discredit that, if you will, as far as a smith not having the material hot enough. Now, before I let you guys go, and I know this is going to be kind of long, and you guys really don't like talking videos, I want to discuss anvil height, because that correlates very much in line with how you lift your arm or you manipulate your elbow and forearm in your hammering process. This anvil here is actually a little high. It is not the typical knuckle height. In fact, it hits me at about mid-hand. Okay, It works for me. It may not work for you. I'm right at six feet tall. Okay. So, I don't have an exact measurement on it. I did when I created the anvil stand, but I'm not using any top tools. I'm not using different apparatuses such as guillotine tools that, you know, stick into the hardy hole on this. I'm not trying to manipulate two inch thick bar stock, you know. The majority of the material that I do in my shop isn't over 
half inch to three quarter inch. Occasionally for some, you know, some certain projects we will do one inch bar stock, but it's extremely few and far between. Now, this anvil here also doesn't have a step. It's closer to my forge and it's significantly lower. Now, this one, if I was to hit something that I really need to put a little bit more force into, which you're supposed to let the hammer fall, so using a bigger hammer and trying to manipulate bigger material, I might utilize this more. Like I mentioned in other videos, my tooling and that sort of thing is at different heights throughout the shop because it works for me. So in addressing the trolls and the seemingly hateful uh, rhetoric on YouTube in the comments section, yeah, I do tap the anvil. I do tap the anvil quite a bit. It works for me. And I'm the one making the YouTube videos. So, regardless, I hope you all found this video at least somewhat helpful, maybe insightful. Maybe you'll take something away from this that you've been struggling with as a smith yourself as far as comfort in hammering for extended periods of time.